Brokerage house Jefferies uh, sees buying opportunity in Indian metal stocks after a period of underperformance versus global peers. Issues a buy call on Tata Steel as well as Hindalco as among their top picks on improving prices and a pickup in economic activity in China. Secret Scientific terms its, uh, terminates its plan to acquire Tineta Pharma announced back in November last year. The company had indicated that the acquisition closure was dragging a bit in quarter three. The stock surges more than 12% in trade. Relegate subsidiary Relegate Finvest resolves all legacy issues and completes a one-time settlement worth over 2,000 crore rupees with lenders. The stock up around 7%. And there's a big block in Gokuldas exports, 11.5% equity change hands in a transaction worth over 260 crore rupees with Clear Wealth Consultancy likely to have sold some stake in the company. Another block deal, it's been a, deal, a morning of block deals. We had one in Home First Finance as well, 8.5% equity changing hands, stock lower by about 7%. Hello and welcome to Chartbusters. I'm Nigel D'Souza and with me as always is Mangla Malu. Well, for starters, the Nifty has gone ahead and in the first hour of trade, broken the 20 DMA. Remember, on the upside, we were trading closer to the upper end. That's closer around the 17,800-odd mark. It's elusive as of now, but let's see whether or not we see a bit of a recovery, though the bulls will like to get above that 20 DMA, which is at around that 17,707 odd uh, mark, 7,705 or thereabout. Well, uh, let's get in Manas Jai. Well, Manas, what do you make of today's trading action? We have seen a good recovery from the recent lows. More to go on the upside, or do you think we'll like to see a bit of a downtick from these levels of around 17,700? Good morning, Nigel. Good morning, Manglam. So yesterday we saw a, a tremendous recovery from uh, lower levels, and today Nifty is facing resistance near 100-day moving average. But again, if you're talking about the trend, I think the trend is positive. Nifty has a lot of support in the range of 16, 17,600 to uh, uh, 17,550. So I'm still hopeful and I believe that if Nifty crosses uh, 17,720, then you can see the levels of around 17,900. So I would like to uh, uh, buy Nifty above 17,720 with a stop loss of 17,660. And, and my target would be uh, around 17,900. But I'm, uh, I'm uh, quite bullish on Bank Nifty, even at current levels. I believe that even from current levels, you can see almost 600 to 700 points rally in Bank Nifty. So straight forward, I, I, I would like to recommend a buy in Bank Nifty uh, uh, 41,600 call option. That is 29th March call option. Uh, uh, I think the price is 560. Take a long position here. A stop loss should be around 350. And here the target would be in the range of 850 to 900. All right, Manas, thanks a lot for that. Uh, you, you know, we're looking at uh, the Nifty Bank as well. Uh, 41,500 puts were extremely active yesterday. So that's a mark that everyone will keep an eye out on as well. And it is uh, a mild outperformer today. Individual stocks, what do you have on your list for us? So uh, since I'm uh, very much bullish on banking, I would like to recommend Access Bank also. Stock has broken its Sunday day moving average. Stock has given a confirmation of higher tops and higher bottoms. So take a long position here in Access Bank. Stop loss should be around 864. And here the target would be around 890. And secondly, the buy call on India Mart, where the stock has given a fresh breakout after after seven days consolidation. Take a long position in uh, India Mart. Stop loss should be around 49.74. And here the target would be around uh, 51.75. Right, Manas. Thanks a lot for joining in and giving us your calls on the indices as well as individual stocks. Believes that there could be some support for the Nifty around that 17.515 mark, with a larger bullish bet on the Nifty Bank. Uh, Let's shift focus to a special segment where we get you a few ideas for profit from our colleagues uh, from Money Control Pro. Sachin Pal joins in. The stock in focus is Radigo Khaitan, which came up with its Q3 numbers a few weeks earlier. In terms of the top line, the company witnessed a growth of almost 5% year on year, which was driven by a healthy uptake in both the premium as well as the royalty brands business segment of the company. The regular business segment, on the other hand, witnessed a degrowth of almost 23% year on year in terms of the business volume. High levels of commodity inflation continue to uh, witness, uh, uh, continue to exert some challenges on the volumes of the company on the on the regular business segment. The trend is likely to continue going into Q4 as well. However, the management has indicated that the Q1 of next fiscal year might see some reversal both in terms of the uh, volumes as well as the margins given the recent changes in UP excise policy. On the capex front, the company has been undertaking a large-scale capex expansion and the bottling plant at Sitapur as well as the dual fleet plant at Rampur is now operational. The company has incurred a total capex of almost 550 crores of which 
uh, has been funded through a mix of internal accruals as well as external warrants. Net debt as a result has increased to almost 430 crores at the end of December 2022. The company is progressing well in terms of its plan and uh, making strong progress in terms of its distribution network as well. The business remains under a very strong, strong footing uh, from a long term standpoint. However, the stock has seen a, a sharp run up post its Q3 numbers and therefore the expectation in terms of uh, execution remain quite high. At around 50 times FY24 estimated earnings, we feel it's wise for investors to book profit at current levels. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Sachin. Well, for the time being, though, we'll slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Mr. Lalit Khetan, the Chief Financial Officer of Ramkrishna Forgings, to discuss the outlook for the business going ahead. Stay with us. Welcome back. As promised, let's get chatting with the management of Ramkrishna Forgings. It has incorporated a wholly owned subsidiary to implement and complete the acquisition of JMT Auto under the corporate insolvency resolution process. The company also in process of adding some more capacity to their existing business itself. We have with us uh, Lalit Khetan, who's the CFO at the company. Thanks a lot, Mr. Khetan, for joining in. First up, you know, uh, it's, it's a good thing that uh, you've received some approvals for completion of this acquisition. Just wanted to understand, uh, you know, by when does the entire acquisition come into your fold? What's the overall money that you'll be spending on this, including renovations as well as CapEx? Yeah, so we have already got the approval from the COC, Committee of Creators or Lenders, and uh, it's uh, with the NCLT for the approval now. And we hope in next three month time, the approval of NCLT also should come for this unit. Oh. And uh, for the outgo, uh, total outgo for this is 70 coal upfront we have to pay and 55 coal over a period of four years. Apart from that, about 70 crore, we have to invest in innovation of plant and machinery and working capital. Got it. All right. So, uh, uh, hi, Lalit. Uh, good to speak to you. So, out of the t so it appears you're going to be spending close to 200 crores in all, everything inclusive, right? On this particular asset. Yes, side. yes. Okay. So, at yeah. peak levels, uh, what kind of revenues can it do? And say it gets closed out in the next three months. You'll have this asset for the entire year in FI25. So what is the revenue potential you can get, point number one? And in FY25 itself, how much of the revenue can you realize? Yeah, so if it uh, closed out in three month time, certainly it will be up for running in FY25. We will take FY24 to renovate it. Hmm. And the peak revenue can be done at around uh, 600 to 700 fold from this uh, uh, unit when the optimum utilization is there. For FY25, we are looking at 250 odd crore turnover from this unit. And you'll break even at 250 crores? Yeah, yeah, certainly, because it's a quite high-value product-making company and they make a lot of value-add in the 4G. And even they have a very good oil and gas uh, uh, plant. And so we uh, hope to make at least 30% EBITDA out of this uh, plant. 30% EBITDA at peak level and uh, obviously below that would be slightly lower, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. And you have incorporated a subsidiary to keep uh, JMT in it, but you're also looking at a lot of other potential uh, assets in uh, the CIRP, the insolvency place? Yeah, we have one more already pending in Supreme Court that is ACIL Limited. Okay. So for that also we have a subsidiary. So we are uh, acquiring all the, our uh, uh, company under CIRP through subsidiary zone. And uh, what is the total money that you've earmarked for all these acquisitions? For ACIL, again, we have to pay 110 crore, again, uh, and 85 crore will go upfront and 25 crore in uh, default payment over a period of five years. And renovation and revenue potential of that business? Th that, uh, I think, is very low because that unit is up and running. So hmm. we need to invest about 20, 25 crore more uh, for renovation. And, and what kind of uh, revenue can completed. you get from 110 crores then, uh, plus 25 crores? So 135 crores is what you'll spend on a running uh, and the plant is up and running. What is the revenue potential out there? That can again go to 500 crore when uh, it's at uh, optimum capacity. When does it go to 500 crore? Uh, sir, the, it's really, uh, it is taking time right now in uh, hmm. so, uh, NCLT. So we are keeping our finger crossed in next six months it should happen. And so 500 crore can come in FY25 or FY26. So in FY26, from ACIL as well as uh, from this uh, other acquisition that we're just talking about, uh, JMT, the total revenue that you can get will be closer around 1,200 crores. And that could potentially be Correct. realized in FI26. Correct. Right. 
Uh, and what about your uh, ad- current own business? I mean, you had att- announced a new capacity addition. I remember us speaking about it by September 2023. It is likely to, you know, come on stream. And the potential peak revenue of that business could also be close to around 5,000 crores at current commodity prices. So what exactly are you yeah. looking at in terms of long-term revenue plans? 1,200 crores, as Nigel pointed out, in FY26 coming in from these acquisitions, your current revenue plus some organic growth there, plus this 5,000 crores coming in on uh, account of the capacity expansion. What are you looking at? No, 5,000 crore is the total turnover we are reaching from the current capacity. Okay. And that 1,200 crore will be additional. So what we are looking at to grow at a CAGR of around 20% per annum. So by FY26, we should reach a 5,000 crore top line from the current capacity itself. And uh, these uh, JMT and ACIL will be extra. So tw- so, t- so around 6,200 crores in FY26? Yes. Okay. And rough margins, blended margins, if we could get that number from you? Sir, because uh, I, I I have not calculated the blended margin, but for RKFL standard on, we are looking at 23 to 24%. We are hoping to improve from year on from 22%, another 100, 200 basis point. And from the, uh, ACIL, it will be again in the range of 20 to 25%. And JMT, what I said, it can be in the range of 25 to 30%. All right. Uh, you know, I just wanted to understand a couple of things uh, in your business right now. Uh, what exactly is the content per vehicle, uh, you know, to the companies that you supply? What's the potential there? And railways as well. Uh, you've doubled your top line from railways. What's the potential? How much does it currently account for? How big can it be? Content for vehicle, we are around at right now 70% in terms of uh, overall CV uh, content. And that's where we are talking about the body component or Excel component because we are not into the engine component. And uh, about the railway. So we have big plan with the railway. And uh, what we are looking at uh, right now this year, we are going to do a top line of around 75 to 100 crore from the railway. But next year, we are looking to doubling this uh, top line because railway are uh, having a quite a good uh, plan uh, for procurement and we are quite bullish and uh, we are also uh, getting orders and approvals from the railway. That's why we are thinking 200 crore will be very much achievable next year from the railway. All right. And what about EV? How much will EV contribute in this total 6,200 crores that we were just talking about? It's only it's only 2% currently of uh, revenues. So when you go to 6,200 crores, you're saying around 300 crores will come in from EV? No, no, 5% of 5,000 crores, basically. 5% of 5,000 crores. Got it. And, uh, you know, your non-road, off-road segments, your, you have mining as well as excavators, etc. How big are yeah. they currently? How big will they be? I'm just trying to figure because you have EVs around 5%. Railways, you said, could be around 200, 250 odd crores going forward. Uh, the non-highway mix could be how much for your business? Yeah, off highway will be do very good because we are doing a lot of work on the off highway. All, all together, taking railway, off IJH and uh, other like construction and mining industry equipment, we are targeting to achieve a 30% non-auto. That includes oil and gas also. So that we are targeted by FY26, we should have a 30% non-auto. Well, that's a significant target that you have. 30% of your revenue coming in from non-autos by FY26. And uh, final question yeah. then, uh, with the kind of debt that you have on your books, What's the repayment plan? See, uh, we are already past our peak date. And with the kind of earning and kind of projections we are having, we are going to reduce debt from year on and at least 150 to 200 crore will go down every year. All right. Thanks a lot, Mr. Khaitan, for joining in and giving us all those details of your business. Wish you good luck with all the mergers and acquisitions, your capacity expansion, and the target that you have of over 6,000 crores by FY26. Uh, so we'll a short break. Come back as we do that. Uh, a quick programming note for you. The 14th of March, CNBC TV 18 will host what will be India's largest summit on gender parity in Delhi. Women leaders from all walks of life will come together to brainstorm and help take decisive steps to bridge the gender inequality that exists in India and across the world. The event starts at 4.30 p.m. on the 14th of March and you can cal- catch all the live action right here on CNBC TV 18. Welcome back here, tuned in to Chartbusters here on CNBC TV 18. Well, let's run you through the note coming in from Jefferies on metals itself. And they are fairly positive. They note that the Indian metal stocks, they've underperformed some of the global peers in 2023 so far. And they believe that, in fact, now they're presenting a buying opportunity. Their top buy pick is Tata Steel. Target price comes up for you on the screen. 
and followed up by uh, Hindalco, whose target price they placed at around 570 rupees odd. They've given five broad factors, so let's run you through that. First is the Chinese economic data is looking up. Both the manufacturing PMI as well as the property prices have started to stabilize, so they like that. Next up on Chinese pricing itself, it's seen a good rebound. Remember, it was down more than 20% in the last year, but it's up close to around 14%. And the inventory levels in China adjusted for seasonality is at the lowest we've seen in the last four years. So that's the second data point. Next is uh, on the India steel prices. Well, it corrected in the last year by close to around 13%. It's up by close to around 8%. And it's uh, around that 60,000 rupees per ton, which is the level that they're working with for the next couple of years as well. That's FI24 and FI25. The important aspect to highlight out here is that they say that domestic prices are at a discount in comparison to imported uh, steel that's coming in there. So that's giving a bit of a cushion on the pricing aspect. The fourth point they make is that Asian steel spreads, well, they've recovered from around $185 per ton to around $225 per ton. But it's still lower than the, uh, the long-term average. So there is still scope for improvement from year on. And finally, on the non-ferrous side, they say that, yes, LME prices, well, it's more or less flattish in this year after falling more than 15% in the last year. But thermal coal costs have cooled down. So that's what's supporting spreads. So all these five factors put together, Jeffries are fairly positive on the metal space. All right, Nigel, thanks a lot for that. That explains uh, the kind of up move that we're seeing in a couple of these metal stocks. The index uh, continues to hold at lower levels, close to around 17,700 thereabouts, uh, down 60 points. But importantly, you know, if you just take a look at uh, the frontline index as well as the mid-cap index, you will see a sea of difference in the market itself. The frontline index, of course, is uh, pressured lower by a couple of these stocks. ITC is at the low point of trade. Big Boy Reliance is well down about a percent and a half. All the Adani Group stocks under pressure as well. These are the index stocks that we're talking about. Adani Ent down 5%, Adani Ports down 2.5%. M&M is the other one which is lower as well. But uh, if you just take a look at the broader markets, we have uh, one and a half stocks in the green for about every stock which is in the red. So nearly three stocks advancing for two declining. And the mid-cap index at an index level is outperforming as well. And that is something which will give bulls a fair amount of uh, hope for a second half rally. Important to watch out for a bunch of stocks which are picking up as we speak. Delta Corp is one of them, which has moved to the high point of trade. Sriram Finance has been doing well all this morning and now has moved to the high point of the session. And Jubilant Foodworks as well picks up from the lows of today's trading session, up around a percent and a half from the lows. With that, we are out of time on this edition of Chartbusters. You stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 Trading Hour. Come back.